Let's go over 18 functions that you need to know if you work in finance and accounting. Starting with our first category, date functions. Up first, we have EO month. And this one is really easy to use. Simply type in equals EO month and point to this month over here, comma, and hit one. The value that gets returned is the last day of the following month I'm referring to in the formula. Want to get the last date of the prior month? Simply just type in a minus one as such. Want to get the first date of the month? That's also simple. Simply enter a minus one, close the parentheses, and then add a plus one outside of the function. For quarters, simply enter EO month followed by a three. For years, simply enter a 12. Want to get the quarter and the year as such? Well, these four functions will help you get there, starting with year. To get to the year, simply type in year and point to the value as such. To get the month, you would do the same, but this time typing in month. Pretty simple, right? Well, to get the quarter, let's think of a clever solution for how we can get this number. First, I'm gonna take this month over here and divide it by three, since there are three months in each quarter. Let's go ahead and copy this down. Notice how everything in the first quarter is greater than zero, but less than or equal to one. Then everything in the second quarter is greater than one, but less than or equal to two, and so on. Well, you can now utilize the round up function to get the nearest integer, which will align with the quarter. So I'll wrap this around round up. I'll then hit comma and enter zero, followed by a close parentheses to round to zero decimal places. I'll go ahead and copy this down. Cool, looks like it works. Now, how can I make it appear with a pretty Q and then the year at the end. Well, for that, we'll use the concat function. So I'll write equals concat. Then I'll type in Q followed by quotations, followed by a comma. Then I'll point to my quarter number over here. I'll then hit a comma and then open quotations with a space followed by another comma. And then I'll point to the year. I'll close the parentheses and hit enter and drag this down. But there's actually one more formula that can allow me to get this whole table for however many rows with just one input. But before I tell you about that, hey, nice to meet you. Well, I don't really know who you are, but I guess you now know who I am. I help people like you grow in your career with fun videos like these around Excel, finance, and accounting. And I have tons of videos, resources, and templates that you can use today. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that button so you don't miss a video. As promised, the function that we can use to get this whole table is called sequence. The way the sequence function works is it will create a list of values based off of the rules that I specify. So if I enter an equals sequence and then write the number five and close, you'll notice that I get five rows each incremented by one. But I could also type into these other optional arguments as such. So if I say seven for columns and then hit enter, now I have a table showcasing five rows and seven columns. This is starting to look like a calendar to me. So let's give it the headers for the names of the week as such. And I'll just drag this forward. Okay, now I'll just enter in five here and seven here. And let's just change our sequence function to instead refer to these cells as such. Perfect. There's just one problem here. There's no 32nd, 33rd, and so forth day of the month. Well, for that, we could actually utilize the day function. Are you really that shocked that there's a day function? I mean, we went over a year and month. What else is there? So if I wrap this sequence around the day function as such and hit enter, I'll get the first 31 days, then the list will start back from one when we get to 32. Another option for me can be for me to choose the starting point in this cell right here. So I'll come into my sequence function, I'll hit a comma, and then for the start, I'll click this button as such. Let's now close the parentheses and let's go ahead and format this by hitting control one and then choosing date. And I'm gonna specifically go with this format over here. Well, now I have a whole calendar and I can just change this to a 12 or a 16 or an 18 and my information will update. Now, if let's say I wanted to get in touch with my HR department to showcase when exactly we'll be processing payroll, well, I can just select every other Friday as such. I could then come in over here and highlight it and share it so that employees know when they'll get paid. But here's where I really love to use sequence. See this date over here? Instead of having it as a fixed value, I can replace it with a date function. 
For the year, I'll type 2024. For the month, I'll enter one, and the day, I'll enter one as well. So we can now combine all these functions into a dynamic table. Here, let me show you what I mean. For start date, I'll again write date 2024 for the year, one for the month, and one for the day. But I could actually use sequence inside my date function. So for the month, instead of saying one, I'll just point to whatever I have over here by first wrapping it around the sequence function. Close the parentheses and hit enter. I can change this number and my values will automatically update. This is called a spill function because the values spill into other ranges. Let's take this one step further and add all this other information. So to get the end of the month, I'll just wrap this function over here around an EO month function and then I'll write comma zero. Great, now look at what I'm gonna do for these remaining three columns. For year, I'll type year. Then I could just point to this cell over here and put a pound symbol as such. This tells Excel that I'm pointing to a spill array and that I should capture the full range instead of just the first cell. I could do the same thing for month and quarter and join them together, this time using the ampersand key. So now I can change this to a 12 or an 18, and all of these values will dynamically update. But what if I wanted to create these dates going across horizontally, like most financial reports read? Well, that's really simple. I could just wrap it around the transpose function. So I'll come in over here, I'll copy this formula, I'll then paste it as such, but I'll wrap it around the transpose function. The transpose function will take a range that's going vertically and change it to horizontal and vice versa. But so far we've only been talking about date functions. Let's now get into some of the most popular functions you'll use in your Excel file. Lookup function. Here I have my data showcasing my profit and loss in a table format, making it easy to use in formula. Let's say I wanted to get the unique values for accounts and dates. Well, it's really easy to do that with the unique function. So I'll type in equals unique, then I'll point to my accounts column over here, close the parentheses, and now I could do the same thing with my dates. And now I have a dynamic range showcasing the unique values for my accounts and dates. But I could also return multiple values from this range using the filter function. So let's say I wanna see all of my revenue amounts. Well, I can just say equals filter, then point to everything in my range over here, hit a comma. Now I'm being asked for what I want to include. So I'll select my account column and I'll say equals quotations revenue. I'll then close the parentheses and hit enter. Check it out. I now have a filtered view of this range as a spill function, but I can take it one step further by adding another condition to my filter. Say, if I only wanna showcase revenue that is above 30,000. So I'll wrap this over here around the parentheses then hit the asterisk key and open a new parentheses for my second condition. I'll now point to my values column and say greater than 30,000. I'll close my parentheses and hit enter. And now the results that are being returned are only those where revenue and greater than 30,000 in the value is selected. Okay, let's take this one step further once again. And this time we'll sort our data. I wanna sort the data in descending order on our date. So I can wrap this around a sort function. So I'll just enter in sort over here. Then I'll hit a comma. Now I'm being asked for my sort index. Well, the index is the column that I wanna sort, which in this case is column two. I'll then hit another comma, and then I'll being asked for the sort order. I'll type in minus one to get to descending. Then I'll close my parentheses and hit enter. Check it out. Now I have two ranges that are filtered and I'm sorting it on a descending order based off of our date. Nice, looks like it worked. But many times my data will appear in a table format like this, where my accounts are going across vertically and my dates are going across horizontally. I wanna use a lookup function to be able to get the value for any account and date that I specify. I won't be able to use VLOOKUP, which can only look up things vertically. So let's say I wanted to pull gross profit for April, 2023. My favorite way to get that is by using index match. So let's start with the index function first because it's so easy to understand. First, let me enter in over here my index function. Now I'm being asked for my array. I'll point to my array as such, and now I'm being asked for my row number. So gross profit is the third row over here. So I'll enter in three. Next, I'm being asked for the column. Well, April, 2023 is the fourth column as such. So I'll type in four. 
and then I'll close the parentheses and hit enter. Nice, it populated. But I don't wanna have to count where exactly my values are especially because these values will update as I toggle my inputs over here. Well, that's what I can do with the match function. The way this works is you, in essence, get the position of a value inside a range by typing equals match, pointing to your lookup value, then pointing to where your lookup value lies, then entering zero for an exact match. Nice, it worked. Let me now do the same thing for the date. So I'll again hit equals match, I'll point to April 2023 for my lookup value. I'll then highlight my dates for my lookup range, comma zero for exact match, and hit enter. Great, now I combine all of this into one function. So I'll write index, I'll reference this entire table as such. Then for the row, I'll write match, the value over here, as it matches to the range over here with an exact match, comma. Then for the column, it's gonna be another match, this time looking up the date as it matches to the date range over here, and again, for an exact match. I'll close my parentheses and hit enter, and check it out, the value populated. Let me actually take this and instead paste it over here. That's better. Now, I can change my row and my column, and my values will automatically update. Now, you may be thinking, what about XLOOKUP? Well, yes, I can do everything I just did with index match via XLOOKUP. Here's what the formula would look like if we were to do the same. But I actually wanna use XLOOKUP in a different way. I wanna populate my table in this set of cells over here using XLOOKUP by pulling in the values from this range over here. First, have a look at how I have my data set up. I have a unique list of my accounts over here. Then I wanna showcase my dates using the functions that we spoke about before. And I made it so that I could change this number and the values will update. So I'll type in equals unique. I'll point to the range over here. And now I have my unique range. I'll then point over here, enter in the pound symbol. And now I have my date range. Now watch how I populate my XLOOKUP function. I'll go over here and I'll write equals XLOOKUP. Then I'll point to my first date over here with a pound sign. Then I'll hit the ampersand and I'll point to the first account over here, again, followed by a pound sign. Now you may be wondering what this is doing. So let me actually remove it from the XLOOKUP to show you what my result is. Here, I have a table that showcases the date and account for each and every combination. Okay, so let me put this back in my XLOOKUP formula. Now for my lookup range, I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time with my table. So I'll point to my date range, then I'll hit an ampersand, then I'll point to my account range. For the return array, I'll select the value over here. Let's close the parentheses and hit enter. Whoa, our whole table just populated with just one function in this cell. I can now change the amounts for any period, and my values will automatically update. Pretty neat, huh? Well, we got four more functions to go, this time covering some formulas. See, so far, we've only been talking about dates and lookup functions. What if I wanna provide an actual math operator on my data, like summing values? Well, sum if s is my favorite for that. So here I have a portion from my profit and loss, and I wanna summarize the values by the department and the cost type. This is one of the most common things that I do when I prepare a profit and loss dashboard. But well, we create this using sum ifs. So I'll write equals sum ifs. I'll point to my sum range over here. Now I'm being asked for my criteria range one. So I'll point to the department. I'll press F4 to lock the cells. Then I'll point to the department over here and I'll lock the column. Okay, now I'm being asked for an optional criteria range two. So now I'll point to cost type. I'll lock these cells entirely. I'll hit comma. Then I'll hit the cost type over here and I'll again lock just the column. Let's close the parentheses and hit enter. Check it out, 1401. The combination of those classifications marked as engineering and payroll. I can go ahead now, drag this forward, and let's just change this dropdown as such. And I'll also change the cost type and check it out. My values update. I always use sum if s instead of sum if, even if I have just one condition, since the syntax differs and you can do it all through sum ifs. But just like you can sum values based off of a criteria, you can also count values based off of a criteria. Now you may be wondering, why would I wanna count values? Well, check out this use case. I imported my profit and loss for January, 2024 and then I did the same thing for February 2024. You'll notice that in February 2024's report, it's larger than January's, meaning I have some new accounts. Now you can go line by line and compare each, but that will take ages. Instead, just use count ifs. So I'll enter over here in a new column, the title match. Then I'll type equals count ifs. Then I'll point to column B for my range. I'll hit a comma, and then I'll point to my value in column F. 
I'll go ahead and close the parentheses and hit enter. So this is saying that it found one match in this column compared to the value here. So if I just change this to revenue three, this now goes to a zero. Let's go ahead and undo that. And now let's copy that all the way across. Okay, now I can see my values over here that have a zero match. To make it pop out even more, why don't we just say that this is greater than zero? And I'll copy this down. Now I have a true or a false, and I could see commission expense and postage and stamps are new accounts that are not found in January. But sometimes I won't wanna sum all of the values, just the ones that don't have subtotals. So here I have a profit and loss again for January, and I wanna get the total for all of my expenses. Now I could sum each of these individually, but I'd much rather just select the entire range and sum those values instead. So in order to do that, I just need to use the subtotal function. So first I'll come to these subtotals here, and instead of reading sum, I'll go ahead and type in equals subtotal. All right, now I'm being asked for a function number. You'll see that number nine is a sum. So I'll type in nine and then I'll select this range over here. Now I'll do the same thing for each of these other values that involve subtotals. Okay, now my values are summed. No difference so far. But what if I put a sum function over here and summed up all of these values? Well, I actually know that this value is way too much. If I were to just sum these individually, I'll get a much lower number, 51698. Well, in order to replicate that, all I need to do is replace this sum with my subtotal function. So I'll write subtotal. I'll then again hit a nine, comma, and then the range. Check it out. Now my values are no longer counting the actual subtotals over here. That's pretty neat, but I've saved my favorite for last, sum product. This is my favorite because it replaces the need for so many other functions. See, most people just know some product with this simple use case. You select one range, put a comma, then select another range, close the parentheses and hit enter. This will take the product of each column and sum it together. But some product is actually much more powerful than that. Instead, you can utilize some product with arrays and set multiple conditions. So here I wanna sum up all the values between this start date and this end date that is either equal to account one or account two as such. Well, to do that, I'll just write some product, then I'll enter in another parentheses. I'll select all of my values over here. I'll then hit in asterisk. I'll then select my date range. I'll say that it's greater than my start date. I'll then enter another asterisk, open parentheses, and again, select my date range, saying that it's less than or equal to my end date. Then again, I'll hit another asterisk and I'll say that my account is equal to either of these two. In order to do that, I'm gonna enter another parentheses, select my range here and say that it's either equal to this or if I hit the plus, I can say that my range over here is instead equal to that. Let's close this parentheses, one more, and then one more to close the sum product function and hit enter. Check it out. If I just highlight these values over here, you'll see that 70,000 is the actual value. If I instead change this from marketing to payroll fees, well, now you'll notice that my values update. If I change this to 331, the value continues to update. Pretty amazing. But Excel functions are just one part of Excel. Once you have your functions set up, you'll wanna present them in a pretty manner, say, in a dashboard. And this video will walk you through step-by-step step how to do that. So just go ahead and click right there. And while you're at it, which was your favorite function? Let me know in the comments below and see you next time.